Welcome back, Hampshire chemistry students. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at trying to reach our goal of being able to do three-step stoichiometry. Right, these problems are going to take us a little bit of time to get through, but it's going to be the exact same type of work that we've been doing for a long time in chemistry. So don't worry, you're going to do awesome. Right, so in order to help us reach this goal, I recommend having a few things out in front of you. The first one being the three-step stoichiometry packet that you can find on Haiku. Now you can print it off like I have if you want to. You can be looking off your Chromebook and writing on a separate sheet of paper, or you could be tipping it's happening right into the Google Doc if you really want to do it that way. I recommend having some way to write things down with me here together today. Otherwise, I also recommend you have a periodic table in front of you. Uh, you're going to want to make sure you've got this or you can go to ptable.com. Uh, that is a great online resource for a great interactive periodic table. Then lastly, what I might recommend having out in front of you, which might make things easier, is our mole island diagram. This was part of our last day of e-learning uh, where you took some notes on how to do some different conversions. We'll use this to help us set up our ideas going forward. All right. So, back to our packet. Right. Oh, don't forget, you got to have a calculator out in front of you too. But so, up here I have a couple of notes that I rec might recommend pausing and getting down if you don't already. And that's to have reminders of our conversions, right? We know how to convert between moles, grams, liters, and atoms or molecules. I also want to remind you that we have a mole to mole conversion here. That is the heart of every stoichiometry problem. You're going to have to do one of these every single time you go through a stoic problem. Now, what you guys have been working on is your assignment is to do the odds only. Okay, there's a lot of problems in this packet and they're here for practice. Okay, as long as you can finish up those eight odd problems, that's all you're we're looking for. If you do the evens though, you'll get some even more bonus points to help raise your grade with a little bit of extra credit. We're gonna do a few he evens here today to help us out. Now, a stoic problem like this is gonna end up looking very similar to any of our other stoic problems. Okay, we're given an equation, we need to balance it. So let's make, if you want to pause right now, this would be a good time to try it out on your own. Otherwise, we can look through it here together right now. So I have one copper on the left that balances with my one copper on the right. Cool. One oxygen on the left, one oxygen on the right, two hydrogens on the left, two hydrogens on the right. So hey, Looks like everybody's already happily balanced here. So I actually can just go ahead and write some ones in here. Everybody is nice and neat and even, okay? You don't have to write the ones, but for, it makes it easier for me to remind, remember that I actually did stuff here. So let's look at our actual problem then. Okay, it looks like we're starting out with asking us to find how many liters of hydrogen are needed to react with 88 grams of copper to oxide. So we're starting with copper oxide and we need to get to hydrogen. So we're gonna follow our, our big idea here that we must always in a problem take moles to moles. Since we know the amount of copper oxide, which is CuO, we're gonna need to at some point take the moles of CuO and convert those into moles of our other chemical here, moles of hydrogen, okay? So this is our heart of our problem, right? We must do this step in order to make it correct. And then we just look on either side of here, do we know what we need to know? Well, we do not know the moles of copper oxide right now, but we do know the grams of copper oxide. So we can turn grams of copper oxide into moles of copper oxide. Then we can turn those moles of copper oxide into moles of H2. My problem didn't ask for moles of H2, it asked for liters of H2. So I actually have to do a whole other step here to turn these into liters of H2. Whew, look at that. And we have some work on either side of our fraction, of our, of our heart here this time around. So this is how we can get our three steps, right? This, each arrow is a step. This plan is really, really important to setting these up. If you don't take the time to plan this out, start with your heart and move through, 
you can make your life a whole lot harder. Okay? You could also think of this a different way. If you look at your mole island diagram, we know that we're starting with grams of copper oxide. We want to get to liters of hydrogen. So if you follow your plan here, on the left I see grams, and on the right I see a volume, I see liters. Okay? We have to go through a mole to mole, right? So I'm going to go grams to moles, moles to moles, and moles to volume, or at liters. That's exactly what we just planned out here, right? You put your finger on your starting point on the left, you put your finger on the finishing point on the right, and you connect one, two, three. Okay. So, now that we see our plan, either from our island or thinking about our different conversions, let's set up our work together. So, I'm starting with those 88 grams of copper oxide. We have three arrows we need to move through. So I'm gonna set up not just one, not just two, but three whole conversions. Whew, we're gonna do awesome though, don't worry. Okay. In our first step, we need to take our grams of our copper oxide and turn them into moles of copper oxide. So just like before, right, our, our known unit goes on the bottom, our unknown unit for this step goes on top. So, looking up at our member reminders here, right? One mole equals your molar mass in grams. So, I'm going to put a one on top, and then I need to find the molar mass of copper oxide. Okay, so I got to do a little bit of quick reminder of our molar mass, right? I have copper, and I have oxygen. Each copper, according to our p-table, weighs 63.55 grams. Each oxygen weighs 16 grams. There is only one of each in the formula, so I'm just gonna multiply each of these by one and add them all up. So my molar mass for my copper oxide is gonna be 63.55 plus 16. So my molar mass here is gonna be 79.55 grams. Okay. Now, I could go ahead and plug this in my calculator, but that would only give me moles of copper oxide, and that's not what I'm asking for. So why get off the bus right now when we have two more stops to finish before we keep going? Okay. So we've gone from grams to moles of our copper oxide. Now we need to go from moles of copper oxide to moles of H2. So let's bring our unit diagonally down, make sure it gets canceled out. We're trying to find the moles of the H2, so that's going to go on top. Okay. So, when I look up here, I see one mole, but I don't see any other moles that I can convert to. That's the good thing, though, is that we have our nice balanced equation, right? This balanced equation is what tells us how we get our mole-to-mole -mole conversions. So, we need to look up here and see that, hey, we have one mole of H2, so I'm going to put a one here, and I have one mole of CO, CuO. This one ends up being pretty easy because it's just a one to ones on everything. So we've done our first step, grams to moles of copper oxide. We've taken our moles of copper oxide and turned them into moles of hydrogen. My final step is to turn those moles of hydrogen into liters of hydrogen. So, moles of hydrogen on top, moles of hydrogen on the bottom. I'm trying to find liters, so liters of hydrogen on the top. Okay. Looking back up at our conversion, this one does have a relationship between moles and liters when we are at STP. And it tells us right here at the beginning of the problem that we are at that standard temperature and pressure. So, I'm going to go ahead and plug in a 22.4 liters for the top and only one for the bottom. So, we can check our units here to finalize our answer. Grams of copper oxide cancels out. 
Moles of copper oxide cancels out. Moles of H2 cancels out, leaving us with exactly what we wanted to find. So 88 grams times one divided by 79.55 times one divided by one times 22.4 divided by one. And I get a final answer here of 24.77. I'm just gonna go ahead and round that to one decimal place. So 24.77 becomes 24.8 liters of H2. Don't forget the number and the unit. And we could always make sure that our answer is correct here by flipping to the very back of our packet and seeing our answer for number two. Look at that, 24.8 liters of hydrogen. We are awesome. So we can also go back as a reminder to check out our island diagram to see some different ways we could have thought through this. Okay? You can see here, right, going from grams to moles. We had to put one mole on top and a molar mass in the bottom. That's what we did, one mole over the molar mass. Moles to moles, we're using our coefficients, right? That's our balanced equation. Moles, right, grams to moles, moles to moles, moles to volume. Put 22.4 liters on top, one mole on the bottom. That's what we did. And right, why don't we try using this guy here in our next problem. Right, you guys will be trying out number three on your own, but let's do number four together. Right, number four is going to involve a little bit more balancing, and it's good because I want to fix something on here a little bit. Hopefully it's fixed on your packet, but number four should be CH4, right, with a little four subscript there, plus O2 goes to make CO2 and H2O. So, let's make sure our equation is balanced together. I have four hydrogens on the left. I need four hydrogens on the right. So I'm going to put a two out in front. This two multiplies the hydrogens and it also multiplies the oxygen. So I have two times one, two oxygens. And then also on this side, there are two more oxygens over here. So that's two plus two four oxygens total on the right. So I need to have four oxygens on the left and they come in pairs of two. So times two would be perfect. So four oxygens, four oxygens. Lastly, I have one copper, excuse me, carbon, one carbon here. Makes our life nice and easy. So we are nicely balanced. You can go ahead and put some ones in there to make sure it all works out, okay? Now, let's look at the actual problem. Let's see what it's asking us to find. Okay. It says, what volume of methane? Methane is the chemical CH4 here. So we're looking for what volume of methane is needed to completely react with 500 liters of oxygen. So we are starting with oxygen. We are trying to find methane. So if I look at my mole island diagram, you can see that we're starting with liters of oxygen. So I'm gonna start with those liters of O2. If I want to get to liters of my other side, my unknown, I have to take those liters of oxygen and turn them into moles of oxygen. right, liters to moles. Then I need to turn the moles to moles, right? This is the heart. You have to do this heart of stoichiometry to help you get to the correct problem. So in this case, we're looking for that CH4, that methane. And then lastly, we wanted to go to liters or our volume. So we're gonna do moles to volume. Okay, so again, look at the way this is set up. We wrote, we fit, we know what, we have our heart in the middle here, right? Moles to moles. We don't know moles of oxygen, but we do know liters of oxygen. So we're gonna convert from what we know into what we're trying to find. You do our heart of stoichiometry and move into liters. Again, we have a one, two, three step problem. Okay. Don't worry, you're gonna do awesome here. 500 liters of O2 is our starting amount. 
three arrows, three lines. So let's bring our volume uh, as starting unit here, right? Liters of O2, liters of O2 goes on the bottom. In our first step, we need to turn liters into moles. So I'm putting moles on top. So we can think back to our conversions from the front page, right? That one mole equals 22.4 liters. Again, if you're following along on your island diagram, right? Your first step here, right? Take one mole over 22.4 liters. That's exactly what we just did with our units. Okay, and our next step, it's telling us to do mole to mole conversion, right? We're gonna be doing our coefficients here. So let's make sure we follow that pattern, right? Moles of O2 comes down and we're trying to find our moles of our CH4, moles of the methane. So we're gonna use the balance coefficients. We have one mole for our CH4, and we had two moles of our O2. So final step here. We're going from moles of CH4 into liters of CH4. So let's check our units here, right? Moles of CH4 goes on the bottom. What I'm trying to find, our final part, our liters of CH4 goes on top. So here I have our, our unit conversions, right? That one mole of CH4 equals 22.4 liters of CH4. We can check our mole island diagram, right? Our final step, moles to volume. 22.4 liters on top, one mole on the bottom. That matches with our canceling. 22.4 on top, one mole on the bottom. And we have all these different resources to help us out here to make sure that we're setting up our problems correctly. And our last resource we're gonna need to use is our calculator. We're gonna take 500 liters times one divided by 22.4 times one on the top, divided by two on the bottom, times 22.4 on the top, divided by one on the bottom. We can hit enter, and we can see that we get the answer of 250 liters of CH4. We can double check our answer at the very back page, right? We already just did number four, and we got, look at that, 250 liters of CH4. Okay. Again, all of our work here, our main focus is on our planning. If you set up the plan, everything falls into place. Why don't you guys try out some more of the odds and keep an eye out for, on Haiku for some more examples and some more resources for some different help and trying these out. You can do this. You're awesome. Make sure to contact with me, me with any questions you might have, and I will see you guys in the next video.